I am Loretta Grimes. My two daughters, Patricia, 13, and Barbara, 15, were found dead on January 22nd. Excited to see. Love me tender, love me sweet. and welcome to Explore the Unknown. My name is Elizabeth and if you're new to our channel, thank you uh, for being here and if you are a returning, thank you so much for being here and supporting us. That for you guys that are new to our channel or just, you know, dropping by, uh, I talk about cold cases, I talk about true crimes, the unknown and explained, that sort of thing. Uh, but if you're new, please subscribe to our channel and oh, of course hit the bell because that can get you notified of our new content coming in Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. And of course the like button if you like our videos. So I'm going to talk about today while I'm doing my nails, uh, I'm going to talk about a case that I remember uh, years ago when I was a kid and it, it was really sad uh, because, you know, uh, it's just it, what happened to these two girls uh, was just terrible. Uh, it's called the Grimes Sisters. I don't know if you've heard about them. It was in Chicago. Uh, they were very uh, widely known because of what happened to them. Uh, like I said, I remember. It was terrible. I remember this. But anyway, uh, they were really young teenagers. One was 15, named Barbara. The other one was Patricia. She was 13. Uh, some say that she was 12, but I believe she was 13 that I remember. I remember them stating when I heard about it, I remember them stating if she was 13. But anyway, uh, they were diehard Elvis Presley fans. Me, I, love, I loved Elvis when I was younger. So they were going to go to see his Love Me Tender show. Excited to see Love Me Sweet. And they just never made it home. Or, you know, movie. And so they were going to go to the Brighton, the Brighton uh, Theater. And they told their mother, and the mother was going to give, they had gave them the money. And it was like $1.50 each. So they took the money, and she told Barbara, the oldest, she said, put it in your pocket so, you know, you'd have it. Don't lose it. So Barbara told her, back, hopefully, by 11.45 but no later than 12, depending on how they can get home. Just surmise that she, they took the bus. Well, they did go to the theater. They watched the movie. They got popcorn and all the goodies. Because, uh, you know, some friends of theirs, or they knew them, saw them in line waiting for them to get, the, uh, the, you know, get all the good stuff. They were sitting behind the girls. So they knew that they were there seeing the movie and that they were going to uh, see the second matinee, I guess. So, but the other girl left, so she did see them. Well, uh, all of a sudden, it was like 12, 11.45 came, no girls. 12 o'clock came, no girls. So the mother, uh, Loretta, she was uh, getting worried. So she called, of course, you know, she was calling around. Well, before that, she told her oldest and the, uh, the son to go check. So the daughter and the oldest son went to check uh, at the bus stop to see if they were there. Well, the sister and the, the brother went down to the bus stop and they waited. Three or four buses came at the bus stop. No girls, no sisters. And so they were heading back. Well, in between that time, like I said, they, the mother was calling around like every mother would would call around saying, have you seen my daughters? You know, that sort of thing. Of course, nobody saw them. Well, the sister and the brother came in and they said they weren't there. So she immediately called the police and to, to report. The police came out and was trying to do an investigation. And they said, are you sure they didn't run away? 
And she says, no, my daughter's not run away. And they said, well, did, you know, maybe they went to a friend's house. And she goes, I called around. Nobody, nobody saw them. And he goes, well, since they're, you know, a diehard Elvis fan, maybe he thinks they would have taken a, you know, hitchhiked over to his, you know, because they're a fan of his. She says, no, my daughters would not do that. Now, remember, this is, de this is in December 28th, okay, after Christmas, in 1957. They, did the, they took the investigation, they were, and, of course, they did flyers. They had people searching for them, and you no know, avail. There's no, no sign whatsoever. Well, then, one day, this uh, worker had, uh, he was a uh, mechanic worker or some kind of worker. He was a worker. He, his name's Leonard. Uh, Prescott. He was going home and he passed uh, a guardrail and he th saw, he thought, were mannequins. And so he went home, told his wife, like every husband does, tell your wife everything. And he says, I saw these, you know, this, these two girls, they saw these two mannequins. And so the wife says, well, let's go down and investigate and see what's going on. So, you know, why, why were they mannequins, you know? So she got in the car and they went down to where he led, you know, he led her where, where they were at. And she saw the bodies and she fainted. I, I, I had fainted too. Uh, I, don't th I don't think she was expecting real bodies. Uh, so she fainted. Well, of course, the husband called the cops. Cops came out, and investigators came out. And they saw these two nude bodies. Now, how they were positioned, it looked like they were just tossed. Because Barbara was on the bottom. She was like in a fetal position, like her legs were in her torso. Uh, and she was on her left side. And um, Patricia was on top of her. And she was on top of her head, her sister's head. And she was facing, her head was facing the right. So, you know, you could tell, they said they could tell that they were just probably just thrown and just landed is what probably happened. Well, they called the coroner's office. They brought him to the coroner's office and the coroner was doing the autopsy. And in the autopsy, they were doing the, um, the investigation. And in the investigation, they noted that, because uh, they, they could see it. When the cop, when the investigators saw the girls, they could see that they had uh, marks on them, and Barbara had like three, you know, wounds on her and her chest that they thought that was probably from an, uh, you know, a knife or an ice pick or something, something sharp. Well, of course, that you know, there was a couple. I believe there was a couple. Um, the investigators that said, well, they thought maybe that it was from the rodents that, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but they weren't really sure. So anyway, they actually, uh, said that, um, Barbara was the one that had the wounds. She had three stab wounds that they, and this is oil, by the way, in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. But anyway, uh, they actually um, did determine that it was an ice pick. So they got, they, they, it was an ice pick. Well, it wasn't until, they did the investigation, like I said. They were trying and trying, trying to find out who, ki who could have killed these, these poor girls. And for what reason... You know, they were really good girls from, you know, this one was in a Catholic school, which is Patricia. And the other one was, uh, you know, uh, in going to the regular school. So you, you, they were good girls. They weren't, you know, bad girls at all. So they couldn't figure out why, who would want to kill these poor girls. And when the girls were killed, you know, murdered, they, the father, Joseph, he went down to identify the bodies at the, at the place to, you know, see if, that's, if it was them. And of course it was, but the mother got a phone call from this person and he was saying that he murdered them and that uh, to prove it, that he did it, he told her, now this was not mentioned in any of the media or nothing. He said, one of the girls had a cross toe and sure enough, it was Barbara. 
she had the cross toe. Now, in the autopsy, Barbara, okay, the oldest, she had, now they don't know if it was consensual sex or if it was not, uh, but they did have, they did find semen, but no tearing or anything like that. So the, they weren't sure if she really got, you know, there was, if it was consensual or not. So they, because it, like I said, she wasn't, Loretta was like, I'm sure like any mother was, would be convinced that this was the killer, you know, cause no, nobody knew about the toes. Nobody knew anything about that. Only the killer. Uh, so, and then he hung up. Well, it wasn't until a year later in November, and it was in 58, that another girl had been found. She was dumped nude and she was murdered pretty much almost the same way as the other two. And that she was Bonnie and her, you know, almost the same thing. Well, <clears throat> they um, suspected that because there, there was already a person that came of it, that came up and said, "Hey, I did it! I did it! I killed them! I killed the two girls." Uh, this before Bonnie got murdered. He goes, "I killed the girls," and you know that uh, he confessed because of uh, a coworker of his said he he stated to the police that uh he saw he saw him with the two girls his name was edward and he he's you know he was seen by a co-worker he, the co-worker says that he actually saw the girls with edward well the, the police went to edward into where he was living and i think it was I believe it was a hotel room and they started interrogating him and after I don't. I didn't really say how long, so I'm assuming probably, you know, days, weeks. I don't know, a couple days. He f confessed that, yeah, I, I did it. I did it. I did it. So they told. They were asking him how did he do it and blah blah blah. And couldn't find out. He said he was. He got them drunk and was doing this. Well, the coroner said that they had no alcohol, no drugs. They only had in their stomach was the popcorn and goodies that they had eaten the night. You know, th that night. And so there was no really way that he could have, you know, his stories didn't correspond with what the coroner was saying. So they had to cut him free. They didn't really charge him with anything. And so he was like, yeah, I didn't really do it. Uh, but he later said that he, you know, he recanted what he said because of the fact is that the police were, you know, uh, I guess, interrogating him roughly, you know. Uh, so he felt threatened, and so he felt like he had to, which I never understood that, but, you know, I never know. And then right after they found her, Loretta got a phone call again. And the guy had the same kind of voice. Uh, she said she knew, she recognized the voice. And he said, I did it, and I got away with it, and they're never going to catch me. I did it. Yeah, I killed Bonnie, and I killed your daughters. Can you imagine how she felt? Uh... I really would have felt so defeated, but she wrote to the one detective and she wrote to a detective and she told him never, ever, ever give up trying to find who did this to my daughters because she wasn't going to give up as a mother. Any mother wouldn't give up. You know, you don't give up on your children. Uh, so she wouldn't, she pleaded with him and he's to this day, he still has that letter stating Please, you know, say, you know, find out who killed my daughter. She went to the grave, sadly. She went to the grave not knowing who did, who, who killed her daughters, which is really sad. I mean, it's, I couldn't imagine. I, I have two daughters. I couldn't imagine. I mean, but anyway, so, uh, this investigator, you know, he was still trying to find out who could have killed the girls. And lo and behold, the Johnson, which is the detective, he had a suspect that was uh, Leroy Milquist. And he basically, he actually was the one that killed Bonnie. He always suspected, Leroy did, or Johnson, sorry. Johnson always suspected that you know, that uh, Milquist actually probably murdered all three girls. 
Uh, but, you know, Melchrist died. Uh, so he, if he did kill the girls, it went, went with him in his grave. So nobody really knows if he really did it or not. They are still looking. Like I said, Johnson is the investigator. He is not giving up. He is still trying to find out who did this to these poor girls. I hope to God that they can actually find out, you know, so they still to this day don't know who did it. Going out to have a good time, watching Elvis, even Elvis, you know, had, you know, a plea, you know, when he found out that, you know, it was her, like I said, it was, it was just nationwide of what happened to these girls. Like I said, I remember bits and pieces of it when I was young. Uh, but yeah, he, he even pleaded. He thought, cause it, you know, like I said, they all thought that they were runaways and he was like telling, you know, pleading, you know, over the media saying, Hey girls, you know, if you, you know, if you're really a true fan of Elvis, you know, please, tr you know, go let your mommy know. It's just like, you know, Miranda and Ashley, they didn't even get a chance, you know? And if you want to know about them, look at my, there's a link down below. I'll see it. It's, it's just, it's just terrible to how people just don't care about life. Well, I, I did my nails. So I hope you enjoyed this, this episode of the Grime Sisters and what the tragic, tragic loss, uh, that, that the world lost. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today and make sure to leave a comment down below uh, to let us know how we're doing, uh, what you think, um, what you think of our episodes, uh, everything, you know, because we are here for you Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and we are always dedicated to make sure that we are trying to get the best content available to you. So thank you so much, and you guys have a great afternoon, and until next Monday, bye!